Hey everyone, so the election is right around the corner and that means that everyone is thinking who's going to be the best candidate. And in the Jewish community, many people are thinking not only who's going to be the best candidate combating anti-Semitism at home in America, but who is going to also be best in the foreign policy realm. You have the war with Russia, Ukraine, you have the situation in Israel and the broader Middle East. Who's going to be the candidate that's going to be the strongest in combating these situations. And uh, Douglas Murray was asked this exact question, what he thinks a Trump presidency would look like. Now, Douglas Murray is, is at best, considers Trump a mixed bag, uh, but let's listen to what he, he says about the situation and uh, go from there. So what do you think is going to happen? Trump gets elected. If Trump gets elected, what do you think happens with those two wars? You think he stops it like he says overnight? We don't, we don't know, of course. I mean, because he, he actually has a he has a clever strategy on this, which he did in 2016 as well, which is say, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah, I saw that. And I like that. I, I mean, like that know, as well. It's a good, this thing of the, the, the yeah. interviewed politician having to give precisely what they would do in office is not a wise idea. Right. Not when you're dealing with people on the world stage like Putin or Hamas. Um, I don't, I mean, there is a... You know, I, th I think that in the case of Ukraine, sad as I am about it, it'll it'll probably end up having to be a land swap situation and there'll be a re redrawing of the borders. Uh, so it's, it's, it's terrible, but since the spring offensive failed last year, I don't think that the Ukrainians have had enough of a military success uh, since 22. Um, so I don't know how he would carve that out, or how it would be done. In relation to the Israel-Hamas war, it's not really an Israel-Hamas war, it's an Israel-Iran um, war. I mean, it's a, it's a war between, at the moment, one of Iran's proxies, the revolutionary Islamic government, Iran's proxies, Hamas and Israel. But the real war, obviously, is between Jerusalem and Tehran. Um, and the, the thing that Trump can do, which the current administration has not done, is to... Um, strangle the uh, the revolutionary regime in Tehran. Um, by the time Trump left office, the Iranians were begging for a release of the, for re relief of the sanctions. And they got it under Biden. And they got this huge cash flow. And um, that's, I do think that's, I mean, it's not the only thing. I mean, I, you, you can't say that, for instance, October the 7th wouldn't have happened if Trump had been in. But the cash flow to Iran since the Democrats have been in, has definitely helped the uh, regime in Tehran. And that means it's been able to fund its terror proxies from Lebanon to Gaza to, I mean, even Yemen. You know, so that the Yemen, the, the, uh, the, the Houthis in Yemen are able to fire really pretty significant munitions at places like uh, um, Elat in the south of Israel. Uh, that's all Iran is doing. Now, I, I think that Trump, the most likely thing he would do is to do what he did before and is to try to tighten the cordon around the regime in Tehran. Um, that would certainly, if, if you could stop the Ayatollah's expansionism across the region and unify the, basically the countries that were part of the Abraham Accords and bring some more into it, there's a definite way to have a better situation in the whole region for everyone. Um, he could broker that. I mean, you know, he brokered the, the Abraham Accords, which nobody thought could be done. And um, if he could add to that, that would be extraordinary. But the main, the main thing is, is stopping the Ayatollahs from their, I think, absolutely insane actual expansionism. Yeah, you know, the the Abraham Accords were a very good thing of of relative peace breaking out in the Middle East among several countries, and there were several more that were on board to join in in um, normalizing relations with uh, the people of Israel. That that's a good thing. I think that's something that should spread across the Middle East. There's no reason why uh, people shouldn't be able to live in peace together. And so, whoever becomes the president, I hope that that is the path that we continue the path of breaking out peace in a peace in a real way uh, across the Middle East. Uh, that is Douglas Murray again on President Trump. And, um, you know, God willing, we all see peace in that region very soon in a real way.